he's going to share with us the story of the legacy of O. Henry. It's a six to eight minute speech. Storytelling exercise number four, the touching story, arousing emotions while telling a story, the legacy of O. Henry, Andrew Cretella. I've reached an age where I get nostalgic about the way things used to be. And when I used to go to school, we read stories by Mark Twain for his wit, Edgar Allan Poe for his gothic horror, and O. Henry for his surprise endings. Well, today I'd like to fo focus on O. Henry because I think he's the most forgotten. O. Henry could write a story in five pages that would last a hundred years. And for the past hundred years, if you write a story of exceptional merit, you may get the annual O. Henry Award. Now there's a movie about O. Henry's stories hosted by Nobel Prize winning author, John Steinbeck. And Steinbeck points out that at one point, O. Henry heard somebody say there were only 400 people in New York worth knowing. And O. Henry was appalled because he felt that everyone is worth knowing. So he titled his next book, The Four Million. Today, I'd like to focus on three of O. Henry's most famous stories. The first is The Ransom of Red Chief. Two grifters drive to this rural town and they have this plan to make a lot of money. They're gonna kidnap a child and collect a ransom. So they drive up to the biggest farm they found. They see a boy playing by the side of the road. They pick him up, put him in the car and drive away. Now, meanwhile, in the farmhouse, the mother says, hey, Pa, somebody just took the boy away. And the father says, they must be strangers. See, the boy is trouble. He's a handful. The kidnappers take the boy into the woods. They set up camp. And the boy says to them, I'm Red Chief. You are my slaves. And I will ride you like horses. If you give me any trouble, I'll scalp you and burn you at the stake. These would-be kidnappers feel like they've kind of bitten off more than they could chew. So they send word to the father, demanding $2,000 for ransom. But they get a note back that says, I feel kind of sorry for you, so I'll take a measly $250 to take the boy off your hands. And by the way, I'm the sheriff, and there's only one road out of town. Our would-be kidnappers realize They've bitten off more than they could chew. They return the boy and pay the parents ransom. They discovered the moral of the story is in a strange way, crime does pay. And that's the story of the ransom of Reggie. Now our next story is the gift of the Magi, perhaps O. Henry's most famous story. His husband and wife are living in New York. They don't have much money. They have just a few dollars between them and it's Christmas Eve. Now the wife has this one thing she's really proud of, this long flowing hair down past her waist. And the husband, he has this beautiful pocket watch passed down from his grandfather to his father to him. Now they wanna buy presents so separately they go off shopping. Now the wife sees a platinum watch fob to connect the watch, the pocket watch to a husband's pocket, but she doesn't have enough money. The husband sees a beautiful set of combs he'd like to see in his wife's hair, but he doesn't have enough money. That night when they come home, the wife walks in and her hair is completely short, cut off. She sold her hair to buy a present for a husband. And the husband, 
he pawned his pocket watch to buy the present for his wife. They looked at each other in shock and disbelief. And then they just laughed and hugged, securing the knowledge that they actually relished the sacrifice they made for each other. That is the gift of the Magi. And now we come to the bittersweet story of the last leaf. These two sisters are living in Greenwich Village in a boarding house. And it was the kind of house where there were many people living there. No one had much money, but everyone knew everyone else's business. Now the younger sister is sick. She's in bed with pneumonia. And as the doctor leaves, he says, I've done all I could, it's up to her now. The little sister is sick in bed. She loves to look out a window and she tells her older sister, you know, there's a vine clinging to the wall across the courtyard and the leaves are going one by one. When the last Lee goes, so shall I. And the older sister says, that's nonsense. Well, that night there's this big storm. But in the morning, the sun rises, the sun's shining, they open the curtain and there's one leaf left on the wall. The sick sister says, you know, if that leaf could make it through that storm, if it could survive, maybe I can too. I think I'm ready for breakfast. But then there's this commotion outside. So the older sister goes out to see what's happening. The old drunken painter who lives upstairs has collapsed on the stairs. And everyone in the house is, is gathered around him. And the older sister hears these snippets of conversation. That old drunken fool, what was he doing? He must be insane. He was out there with his ladder, his paints and his brushes all night through that storm. He's a damn fool. But the older sister realizes what happened. She goes back into the room and looks out the window. And as the, the ivy falls away from the wall, there's one beautifully rendered leaf on the wall. The old man has finally painted his masterpiece. Oh, Henry wrote stories about people because he knew that everyone is worth knowing. Everyone has a story to tell. Everyone should be listened to. Everyone has something to say. And so this is the message I'd like to leave you with today, courtesy of O'Henry. Everyone is worth knowing.